Welcome to the Ninja 1 to 100 leveling skills guide. I'll be going over all of your skills as you're trained to break your hands trying to be a ninja in real life better than the rest of them, but also hopefully kill your enemies along the way. Watch as you go from this... ...to this. This is a beginner-focused series aimed to help those new to Final Fantasy XIV, the MMO genre, or still just need a little help. In that same vein, this will be focused on your actions and how to use them. We'll not be going deep into optimization, instead focused on the general play and giving general opening rotations. We will go through these together in order to help new players understand the process. If you wish to push your play further, there are further places you could research the job. The goal here is to drop players in on the ground level so they can make strides to improve themselves. Tooltips are broken up by expansion and that expansion's level cap. So level 50 for A Realm Reborn, 60 for Heaven's Ward, 70 for Stormblood, 80 for Shadowbringers, 90 for Endwalker, and our final level cap of 100 in Dawn Trail. I recommend all players add Sprint and Limit Break to their hotbars, both found in the general tab of the Actions menu. And as for how my hotbars build, it'll make sense at 100. Just put your skills on your hotbars so that you are comfortable as you play. Everyone has their own way of doing things. If you want more info on the how and why I set up my UI, check the description for a video about it. Finally, keep in mind that this is an active MMO. Patches can and will change jobs. Check the description for a quick overview of each patch's changes or special notes. With all that out of the way, please support me in whatever way you can, check my links below, and let's begin. Ninja is considered a busy job, even among other fast DPS. Many consider its opener the most hectic in the entire game, made up for with a pretty chill filler phase. The amount of actions you have to take in your opener across all your different buttons give Ninja some infamy, even if it's overall not that bad. Your main gimmick is your Mudra buttons. Using different combinations of your Mudra will grant access to a wide variety of different skills. This leads to many skill options all within the same set of buttons. The downside is you need to memorize these patterns one way or another, as you will use every single one of these depending on the situation. This is on top of a pretty filled out toolkit. You can't start the game as Rogue meanwhile, you must start as any other class. Complete your level 10 class quest, then go to the guild in Limsa Lominsa, which means if you did not start in Limsa, you need to also progress the story until you reach it, as the island Limsa is on is normally segregated from the mainland for new characters. Let's get into the finer details of each skill now. Level 1, Spinning Edge. On a base 2.5 second global cooldown is our most basic of attacks. It does 180 potency of damage to an enemy. Just hit enemies till they die. Level 2, Shade Shift. With a 2 minute cooldown, Shade Shift is a shielding ability. You give yourself a shield for 20 seconds with 20% of your max HP. This helps you survive out in the world, but also will help you out in party content. You're not the weakest defensively, but you're not exactly beefy. Most bosses later on have some form of raid-wide AoE damage you can't avoid. Use Shade Shift to block some of the damage. Or maybe you made a mistake and are going to take avoidable damage. You can shade shift to negate some of your mistake. If you already made the mistake and got a vulnerability debuff, you're now taking extra damage. Shade shift will balance out this extra damage. Make sure to avoid the AoEs you can and use shade shift to lower the damage you take from the stuff you can't. Level 4, Gust Slash. This does a 100 potency attack to the enemy when used by itself. We don't want to do that. We want to use this as part of a combo with Spinning Edge. This way it does 260 potency. Combos light up like so. There's other stuff that light up like this, but combos are the first one to get used to. Alternate both of your attacks to get the most out of them, starting with Spinning Edge. Further, I won't be mentioning non-combo potencies going forward. We should always get the combo potency, so that's our focus. At level 8 is our first roll action, Second Wind. This and all other roll actions are key parts of your toolkit. However, I do not go over them here. Put them on your bars, and if you want descriptions of them, head to the card in the corner or in the description for a dedicated video all about roll actions. We also have Leg Sweep at level 10. Level 10, Hide. This is an odd skill. It has a cooldown of 20 seconds and makes you invisible while reducing all movement by half. While invisible, most normal enemies cannot see you. Using any action will end the hidden buff. The uses of this are very limited outside of your class quests. Anything 10 levels or higher cannot be hidden from. Special enemies like fate bosses and hut mobs cannot be hidden from either. Even further, you can't even use this in battle. 
Avoiding combat around tightly packed enemies is about all this is useful for, and even that isn't too good. Keep this button around though, it actually has uses later on. Another roll action comes in at level 12, Bloodbath. Level 14, All Fours. This reduces all fall damage. Yes, the game has fall damage. No, you should never be jumping off cliffs in combat. And yes, you can still die from fall damage, but only if you are in combat. Outside of combat, fall damage itself is never lethal. Level 15, Throwing Dagger. This is a class quest skill, which means you can't use it without first doing your class quests. Please do your class and job quests for a good number of your skills. I won't be saying when another quest skill comes up, but the top left of the screen will always denote when we're talking of quest skills. As for Throwing Dagger, the skill sucks. It does 120 potency to a single target. The benefit of this is that you can attack from range. It can be used up to 20 yelms away. The only practical use of this is to leash a single mob away from a group in the overworld. As a ninja, you get several long range options, all of them far stronger than throwing dagger. There are very few cases where you will still use throwing dagger. Half the time, you never had to be out of melee range to begin with. The other half, you only needed to dodge for half a second and move right back in. Avoid using this if you can help it, but rarely you will still want it. Level 15, Mug. This has a 120 second cooldown and does a low 150 potency of damage to an enemy. However, because it's an ability, we can weave it or use it between our weapon skills without losing time. This gives us free damage. Throw it out anytime you can. There is a further effect. All damage the enemy takes for the next 20 seconds will be increased by 5%. This is low, but later on matters quite a bit more. This bonus isn't very useful in trash pulls, but on bosses this is going to do a lot of work, since everyone is focused on that one enemy. You should still use it on cooldown even in trash packs. Maybe one enemy is being missed by the group's attacks, or has more HP than the others. There's one more very niche, but very useful tool to mug. If you kill an enemy with mug or the very next attack, there is a small chance you get extra loot. Keyword, chance. If you're ever on a crafting binge or looking for extra loot for selling, this can get you a few more drops. But also, retainers do this work for you, and way better. Unless you need a lot of the item and fast, just have a retainer do the hunting. Level 18, Trick Attack. This is a very important attack, but we're getting it a bit too early for it to be properly useful. We cannot use this skill unless we have the hidden buff from Hide. Trick Attack has a 60 second cooldown and does an attack worth 300 potency of damage. However, if done from behind an enemy, the rear, it does 400 potency. This is our first positional skill. The rear is denoted in the following picture by the red portion. Regardless of if you get the positional, the target you hit will take 10% extra damage from you and you alone for 15 seconds. This is a decent boost and it multiplies together with the 5% from Mug. The issue is Hide. You can't use this in bosses and that's the main use for Trick Attack. If you get a tank that only pulls single groups, you might get to use Trick on one of them. Any tank that pulls multiple groups of enemies, you're better off skipping it entirely. By the time you get into Hide, a quick tank will already be dragging the enemies away and out of range. We will come back to Trick Attack later. Level 20, Fleet of Foot. Unlike all fours, this actually has a use in combat. This is a permanent speed increase. It's about 10% on top of your base movement. This makes it 10% easier to dodge any errant AoEs or mechanics fights bring up. Sprint is still better, but having 10% faster movement no matter what is a very useful tool. Just don't get overconfident and take unneeded hits. As a note, no, speed buffs do not stack. Only the fastest speed buff is applied, so Sprint would override the fleet of foot buff for its duration. Faint is our level 22 roll action. Level 26, Aeolian Edge. This is your third combo hit, comboing off of Gust Slash. So Spinning Edge, Gust Slash, Aeolian Edge. It does 280 potency to the enemy. Further, this is another rear positional. It does 340 potency from the enemy's rear. Don't bother trying too hard to get positionals while solo. It won't work unless the enemy stops to cast something. To obtain the ninja job, you must first reach level 30 and complete the level 30 rogue quest. Additionally, complete the main scenario quest, self-management, which is at level 20 in the story. Return to the guild and the quest should be there for you. Level 30, 10. This is where things start to get interesting. 
This is our first skill with charges. Skills with charges can be used multiple times, and 10 has 2, with a charge time of 20 seconds. In total, that's 40 seconds of charge time. The moment you use one charge, the timer on the recharge will begin. You'll also notice the 2 that denotes how many charges you have disappears when you hit 10, and you can hit 10 more than twice. Upon activating 10, you get a buff that lasts for 6 seconds. If you let this 6 second timer run out, you lose the use entirely. This is your first Mudra, and they all have a 0.5 second recast time. If you use 10, rather than the normal 2.5 second global cooldown, it will have a half a second cooldown applied to everything. You cannot use this skill alone. Let's look at what else we get with 10. Level 30, Ninjutsu and Fuma Shuriken. The tooltip for Ninjutsu can be a little confusing. What this is trying to say is that the Mudra combo you press changes the skill. Right now we only have one Mudra, so we're limited. If we press 10, Ninjutsu changes into a different skill. Press it again, it changes to something else. Three times or more, it doesn't change further. This is because pressing 10 more than once, despite it having charges, is a failure state. We get a little bunny rabbit ninjutsu, the best skill in the game. It's very cute. This is known as bunnying. If you bunny, you failed your ninjutsu. Another failure state is using any other skills besides mudra before pressing ninjutsu. If you use 10, then spinning edge, you will bunny. When you press a mudra, you are committing to using a ninjutsu. So let's look at what happens when we press 10 a single time. Ninjutsu will turn into Fuma Shuriken. This and all ninjutsu have a 1.5 second recast timer. Fuma has a 25 yom range, doing an attack of 450 potency to a target. That's a big hit, considering Aeolian Edge is only 340 with a positional. Upon pressing Fuma Shuriken, the 1.5 second global cooldown triggers and 10 will now be missing a charge. While Mudra have charges, this is more like charges for casting ninjutsu. The only exception is if you let the timer run out. Remember, when hitting 10, a timer begins. This is how long you have to hit ninjutsu, or that charge will be lost. Under normal circumstances, this shouldn't be much of an issue. We broke it down, now put it all together again. Press Mudra buttons to make ninjutsu change. Using the same Mudra more than once is a failure, as is using any other attacks. Press ninjutsu afterwards to send the attack. You have up to two charges of these, so one thing we could do is 10 Fuma Shuriken, then 10 and another Fuma Shuriken back to back. Finally, we only have six seconds to use once started. Once you hit a single Mudra, you are committed. There's a lot more elements to this than your normal skills, but overall it's pretty simple. The more technical elements are good to introduce now because of the abilities we will obtain later. More Mudra especially. Our final interaction is with Hide. Let's say you kill an enemy after using both your charges of Mudra. If you press Hide, all charges will be restored. Between battles, you can get charges back instantly. This is good for any wave-based situations, or when the walk between encounters is short. Level 32 gives us the roll action, Arm's Length. Level 35, Chi, Raiton, and Katan. Chi is our second Mudra. It shares the same two charges as 10 does, because again, it's more like uses of ninjutsu that the charges are referring to. If we use just chi once by itself, we once again get Fuma Shuriken. A single mudra use will always be Fuma Shuriken. Things change when we start to combine mudra. 10 into chi will turn ninjutsu into Raiton. Raiton is a whopping 650 potency of damage to a single target from anywhere within 20 yams. This completely replaces Fuma Shuriken. The only reason you will use Fuma is if you accidentally start with Chi, because as we will see, the order you use your Mudra matters. Chi into 10 will instead give you Katan. This is our first AoE, or Area of Effect skill. This does 350 potency to a target, and all enemies within 5 yams of that original target. For our first AoE attack, this is a strong one. The charge time is short, and we can have two of them. Anytime there are two or more enemies, use Katan instead of Raiton. Takes the same amount of time to use, but does a little extra damage. Just make sure the enemies are stacked together when you go for it, as poor tanks will not stack enemies together. Remember all the lessons we already learned. If you use two of the same Mudra, it fails. We can't do 10-10, Chi-Chi, or 10 chi 10 It's not just being back-to-back, -back, but using the same Mudra more than once. Remember to keep using Hyde to get more uses of Raiton before bosses, and Katan for packs of trash mobs in dungeons. Level 38, 
Death Blossom. This is our main AoE skill. It's a normal 2.5 second global cooldown. It has a 5 yarm range, attacking all enemies in a circle around ourselves. It does 100 potency of damage to all enemies hit. This is far weaker than Katan, but this doesn't have a 20 second charge time. Anytime there are 3 or more enemies, get spamming this AoE. The more enemies there are, it gets even stronger. Big groups from the tank, big potential for big damage. Our main combo just remains weaker until only two enemies remain. A good use of this as utility is to break hide. If after an encounter you have no ninjutsu, press hide and then when the hide is fully active, use death blossom. This breaks hide immediately without needing to click off the buff or such. Level 40? Assassinate. On a 60 second cooldown, this does 200 potency to a single target. This is just some free damage with no extra effect. Well, technically it does have one, it has an animation lock. You aren't able to move for a very short window. This isn't that big of a deal though. This will later be removed and won't really be an issue outside of high-end content at level 50. Level 40, Shikuchi. On a 60 second cooldown, this is a movement tool. It's a bit finicky to use, but luckily the job quests themselves actually teach you to use it. First, you select the skill, aim with the mouse or using the camera on controller, then click the place you want to travel to. Press the bottom button for controller uses. The range is 20 yams, so you can quickly teleport over to any position within that range. That's the same range as Raiton if you've already gotten used to that distance. This is a prime candidate for a macro that teleports you to a target, just because ground targeting skills can be hard to use. Slash, AC, Shikuchi, Open Carrot, T, Close Carrot. This makes it that you can teleport right to a boss or such, or just be a tryhard like me and always do it manually. Outside of active combat uses, this is very good for pure movement. The teleport is very fast, can go pretty far, and the cooldown isn't that long. You can easily use this a ton of ways, like moving around town, or trying to catch up to the tank if they're getting far ahead. Don't forget you have Sprint too, though. Level 45, Increase Attack Speed. Do they really have no better name for this? It does exactly that, reducing your auto attack and global cooldown timers by 15%. This puts you at a base 2.12 second global cooldown. This does not affect abilities or your mudra. Those remain at 0.5 seconds with a 1.5 second ninjutsu cooldown. This is replacing an old mechanic of ninja. Get used to the speed as we're not getting any slower. Level 45, Jin, Hyoton, Doton, Huton, and Sweeton. I laid out all the skills we get with this level right there just to emphasize how huge of a skill this is. We only get Jin for an actual button, but having another Mudra gives us far more combinations. Before we go over the new combinations, let's retread some old ground. Jin by itself will give us Fuma Shuriken, same as the other two. Jin into Chi will give us Raiton. Jin into Ten will give us Katon. This points out something new. With the exception of Fuma Shuriken, what matters is not the order of the Mudra, but the final Mudra in the line. Ten Chi and Jin Chi both result in Raiton, because Chi is the final Mudra in the line. The same follows with Chi Ten and Jin Ten, both are Katan because it ends with Ten. That leaves us with a ninjutsu of two Mudra ending in Jin. Ten Jin and Chi Jin gives us Hyoton. This is trash. It only does 350 potency to a single target and binds them in place for 15 seconds. Binds are removed upon taking any direct attack damage, including auto attacks. That is why Hyotan also cancels your auto attacks until your next weapon skill. In party content, binding a single enemy is pointless outside of very specific high-end raids where a bind might be needed. Solo, you could consider using it if you get yourself in a bad spot, but that's only one enemy you bind. Killing enemies faster also tends to work out equally as well, if not better. Simply ignore Hyotan, but don't forget it exists. Much later down the line, we will have a use for it. It's bad right now, but learn how to use it in a vacuum. Personally, I think of Mudra as 1-2-3 based on when you learn them. If Raiton is 1-2, Hyoton is 2-3. Now let's talk about the combinations we get with using all three Mudra. Jin Ten Chi or Ten Jin Chi, both ending in Chi, is Doton. Generally, pretend Jin Ten Chi is your only option for Doton. This sounds weird, and it is, but it will make sense much later. For now, let's talk Doton. Doton is an AoE dot, damage over time, with a 5 yarm range, centered on your position. It places a circle on the ground for 18 seconds. 
Dots do damage every 3 seconds, which is on a server tick. Divide the timer by 3, and you get 6 ticks of 80 potency. Multiply that together, and you get Doton doing 480 potency of damage for the full duration. However, it also does damage on placement for a total 560 potency. Let me also emphasize that this is weaker than Rhyton on a single target. Doton on a single target is not good. It is exclusively for AoE, and on enemy groups that will live long enough to make use of that damage. Also be sure to tell the tank to stand in your Doton if they aren't, since a lot of tanks will assume it's an enemy attack. Only enemies actively in the circle will take damage. This also applies heavy to all targets who step into the puddle, and attempt to keep the enemies inside of it. This is stronger than Katan if it gets most of the duration. Make sure to properly place down your Doton puddle in the middle of enemy packs after the tank stops grabbing enemies. If they're actively on the move when you place it down, that's your fault rather than theirs. For any trash fights, throw out a Doton, then swap to Katan until the puddle disappears. If the enemies are somehow still alive and not close to dying, throw out another Doton, and hopefully that'll carry you to the fight's end. Later levels, trash mobs can have a lot of HP. Also, using Hide will remove Doton from the field. This is because of very old, very cheesy openers. Ten Chi Jin, or Chi Ten Jin, ending either way with Jin, is Sweet On. Like with Doton, Ten Chi Jin is the far superior option. The reason why this is better will not be shown until level 70. Sweet On does a decent hit of 500 potency. No big deal on its own, it's weaker than Right On. However, it has an additional effect of Shadow Walker for 20 seconds. Shadow Walker works in place of the hidden effect from Hide. What that means is... Level 18, Trick Attack. On a 60 second cooldown, this is 300 potency of damage, or 400 from a target's rear. It also puts a 10% damage up debuff on the enemy for 15 seconds. Only you can make use of this debuff. This can only be used after using Sweet On. Coming up to a boss, we can throw Sweet On on them to get our Shadow Walker buff, then throw on Trick Attack for big damage and buffing our damage afterwards. Further, note that this is an ability. Like Muggle Assassinate, we can throw it out between weapon skills for no loss damage. So throw out a Sweet On every 60 seconds, and then pop up Trick Attack as soon as you can. It's a big hit, and makes you do bonus damage afterward. We kind of interrupted our talk of Jin to show how Trick Attack is generally useful now. Let's go back to finish that discussion. Jin Chi Ten, or Chi Jin Ten, both ending in Ten, gives us Hutan. This is functionally an AoE version of Sweeton. It does 240 potency of damage to a target, and all enemies within 5 yams around it. This is 110 potency lower than Katan, and only gives us access to Trick Attack, which works on only one enemy. Most tanks are going to be doing wall-to-wall -wall pulls, which means large groups of enemies. What matters more is killing all enemies fast, rather than one enemy faster. So Trick Attack will only be beneficial for if there's one enemy with lots of HP to make up for not getting another use of Katan, or even Doton. The only situation I can really see Hutan being good is maybe on two targets, specifically only two enemies. You don't have enough enemies to use Death Blossom, so you will end up using your single target attacks that Trick Attack will be worth it. Mug is also single target after all, but like, this is getting into optimizing territory. So basically, I'm saying Hutan kinda sucks. On bosses, you want to sweet on. In trash, Trick Attack is low potential. But much like Hyotan, make sure to remember Hutan exists. While it generally isn't good now, it becomes exponentially better in Dawn Trail. You might be thinking I misspoke there, but no. I mean literally level 92. Overall, we will be using every one of our ninjutsu except for Fuma. We will only be using a select few of them at this low level, those being Raiton, Katan, Doton, and Sweeton. Try to memorize all these mudra options, but for now you can focus on remembering only the few you need. Just be ready to put the rest of the ninjutsu into practice. Also, having Sweet On doesn't mean we get rid of Hide. Hide still resets our Mudra on cast. This is still amazing value to use after a fight, since you'll ideally be ending any and all fights with zero uses. Even if it's outside of proper rotation windows, ninjutsu are stronger than our basic attacks. Here we have our final roll action, True North, at level 50. If you missed it, there's a dedicated video for roll actions in the description. Level 50, Kasatsu. On a 60 second cooldown, this gives you one free ninjutsu cast that is also 30% stronger. You do not need an available charge, it even removes the counter for it. Any and all ninjutsu can be used, but we're going to be limiting ourselves for this one. 
Ideally, Rhyton and Doton only. Katan if you already put a Doton down. Of course we're going to use this on our strongest options. You only have 15 seconds to use this free ninjutsu before Kasatsu wears off. That is not how long the bonus damage lasts. Under most normal circumstances, this timer isn't going to matter. Simply use this to do a super ninjutsu. Raiton does 845 potency of damage under Kasatsu. It may only last for one ninjutsu, but that one attack is very strong. Then there's something like Doton. Assuming the full duration, that's over 700 potency of damage per enemy. Assuming you hit with the placement and get the full duration. But even assuming a good tank, you'll likely miss a tick or two on some enemies. Use this on cooldown so you don't miss out on big hits. We also want to consider how something like this would benefit in our opener. An already big hit under Trick Attack and Mug. This is the main crux of Ninja, putting up Sweeton into Trick Attack and Mug, then fitting in as much as you can under the buffs. Our allies will be doing the same ideally, but there is a lot we will be trying to do. Pre-pull, Ten Chi Jin, Sweeton on pull, Kasatsu, Spinning Edge, Gust Slash, Mug, Aeolian Edge, Trick Attack, Ten Chi Right On, Assassinate, Ten Chi Right On, Spinning Edge, Gust Slash, Aeolian Edge, Ten Chi Right On, One Two Three Spam until your next Trick Attack. There's a lot to talk about here. Pre pulls are often hard if you're a newbie to a duty. The issue is you need to prepare before a tank pulls. If you are the last player out of a cutscene, if they haven't already pulled in the case of a dungeon, they will immediately pull the moment the barrier goes down in Trials and Raids. Despite this, just do your opening the same way. You will just be slightly behind and may need to slightly adjust to when the final ninjutsu is used. And the same token, every now and then you get a tank who will give you a countdown. You want to press your first mudra about 6 seconds before the tank pulls to maximize how soon the charge time gets going. Again, it's okay if you don't get that full 6 seconds, but that's the goal. As for Sweet Taunt itself, we're using that to start because we want Trick Attack. The moment you hit with Sweet Taunt, we even Kasatsu to get the buff running. Let's actively use that 15 second timer. From here we do a simple 1-2-3 combo string. Our timings for Mug and Trick Attack are as they are due to the specific opener I am recommending. That being 3rd GCD Trick Attack. There are a number of opener choices, all of which have different use cases. Otherwise I felt this was the best recommendation and I will be trying to build your muscle memory for later. Now comes the trick attack window itself. Most if not all other party buffs we could get should also be active. There are a few of those at level 50, but many more as we get to higher levels. This is why we don't immediately use our buffs. Overlapping them with the party makes them far stronger. We prioritize using our Kasatsu because of the timer, it being our single strongest attack, and we still have another charge of Nijutsu. We have time after the first Raiton to weave in Assassination into a second Raiton. We then have to fill in another 1-2-3 combo before a third Nijutsu comes off of cooldown. Throw this out as one last Raiton. From there we're stuck with just basic 1-2-3 spam. Your next ninjutsu is going to be Sweeton, shortly before Trick Attack comes off of cooldown and right before you cap on charges. You're going to do the Sweeton, Kasatsu, and three Raitons every 60 seconds. One from Kasatsu and two from the cooldown. This spends every charge of ninjutsu you'll get with no leeway. Because of this, I want to also mention using ninjutsu for ranged attacks. In higher level play, you will learn when you need to be out of range of a boss. In this case, you will refrain from using that final Raiton to use it for that disengage. In most cases though, you can use all your Raitons in your opener and burst windows. Let's also talk about an AoE opener. This also technically doesn't make sense in the same way. It's not that simple, since AoE situations are more complex. This especially includes the fact of tanks typically pulling multiple groups. We're not going to unleash our burst until the tank stops moving, but that doesn't mean we have no options while running. While right now we don't really have too much to gain from it, getting a little bit of damage does kill enemies faster, so spam Death Blossom as we run. We use this over single target hits only because hitting with single target while running can be pretty terrible. Low damage is better than no damage. Once the tank stops pulling, they group all the enemies up, unleash everything. We start with a Kasatsu and Doton because powering our strongest hit is key. 
we can also weave in Mug just for the free damage on one enemy. This is going to actually be useful in AoE later, so better to practice now. Until then though, this kind of sucks and can be ignored. From there, it's just Katan spam, along the same lines as the normal opener. You're going to get two uses of it only, since one of our Mudra was given to Doton. Otherwise, there's not much here. That makes sense since our toolkit is really focused on the single target end. We'll get a lot more to fit in later. The only thing we had to really worry about is Mudra. Our GCD got a lot faster, but that's not a big change at the moment. A Roman Born is just the start of our gameplay after all. The problem is that things aren't going to get much more interesting for quite a while. The Heaven's Ward toolkit is kinda empty. Level 52, Hak Mujin Satsu. This is a combo off of Death Blossom. No longer do we just spam one button for basic AoE. This is 130 potency to every enemy within 5 yarms of yourself. That's all it does, just do your AoE combo on 3 or more enemies. Level 54, Armor Crush. Before talking about specific effects, let's talk about the skill itself. This does 300 potency of damage to an enemy, or 360 potency when you do the positional. This is a flank positional instead of a rear. The flanks are the sides of enemies, with the red sections denoting this. Aim for the positional in party content. Now for the interesting stuff, we have a new gauge. This is a set of 5 kunai called Kazumatoi. Armor Crush will give you 2 Kazumatoi, filling in the gauge. Kazumatoi is spent on only one thing, even at level 100. This will buff the power of Aeolian Edge by 100, to 380 potency, or 440 when you do the positional. Simply just always finish combos with Armor Crush if you don't have Kazumatoi. Its power is higher than Aeolian, and makes Aeolian a lot stronger afterward. You can also intentionally pull Kazumatoi for later. If you have 3 or less, you can Kazumatoi to store more. Maybe you're about to hit a boss. Cap off your gauge right before the enemies are finished off, then go wild for the boss fight. Level 56, Adept Assassination and Dream Within a Dream. Adept Assassination is an upgrade to Kasatsu. Sorry, wrong script. It upgrades Assassination. Dream Within a Dream is 3 hits of 150 potency each, for a 450 potency attack. That's more than double the power. It also removed the animation lock. It wasn't a big deal, but it's already gone now. Getting into higher level stuff, mistakes are more costly, but for casual content the only difference at this point is extra damage. And then that's it for Heaven's Void. We really got nothing. The only changes we have are adding in Armor Crush and Hakumu Jinsatsu. Replace the first Aeolian Edge with an Armor Crush for single target, and in AoE we just alternate Hakumu Jinsatsu. There really isn't all that much different, so let's not waste time here. Let's get moving on to Stormblood, where things are actually going to change. Level 62, Shukiho. We now have a new gauge called the Ninki Gauge. All of our weapon skills now grant us 5 Ninki with each use. Mudra never grant Ninki either. 5 isn't that much, but it does add up. You need the gauge to hit 50 before the main gauge fills and starts to fill the rolled up scroll. Eventually you cap out at 100 Ninki, so careful not to overcap. Now, how do we spend it? Level 62, Hellfrog Medium. For the cost of 50 Ninki, this does 160 potency of damage to a target and all enemies within 6 yams of the original target. So this is slightly bigger than your other AoE options. It also has a range of 25 yams, so you don't need to be next to the enemy to use it. Given this is our only Ninki spender right now, this is a single target attack too. It's stronger than Mug, and can be used more often than Mug, even for single target. But definitely prioritize using it for AoE. When you have 50 Ninki, spend it unless you're about to put up buffs. Level 64, Enhanced Shikuchi. This is a very niche upgrade. Using Raitan, Katan, or Hyotan, all of our two Mudra Ninjutsu, will reset the cooldown of Shikuchi. At least, on most targets. I'm not sure of the exceptions. But to make use of this, you have to use Shikuchi, use Mudra, then Shikuchi again within what would have been the normal 60 second cooldown. They don't need to be back to back, but they do need to happen within the 60 second Shikuchi cooldown for this to matter. I'm not going to say it isn't sometimes useful, but it's a very specific situation. Level 66, Mug Mastery and Dokumori. Mug has received a very big buff. Dokumori has mostly the same functions, but doubles the power to 300 potency. On top of that, it grants us 40 Ninki on use, nearly giving us an entire use of Hellfrog Medium. You're going to get 5 Ninki from both the attack before and the attack after Mug. 
so you essentially always have 50 Ninki available immediately after Dokumori. Level 68, Bavakakra. This is our proper single target Ninki spender and is a melee ranged attack. It does 350 potency of damage to a target. That's a lot bigger of a hit than Hellfrog Medium. So on bosses, throw this out instead of the frog. Save Hellfrog for trash packs and wall to wall pulls. It takes at least three enemies for Hellfrog to be better. Level 70, Ten Chi Jin. Notice this shares the name of your three mudra. I will instead call it TCJ to differentiate it. TCJ is a lengthy 120 second cooldown and can be confusing to use. Firstly, you cannot be moving at all when you activate it. The skill will be cancelled if you are not standing still when pressed. Be absolutely sure you're stationary. Moving after placing it down will also cancel it. Secondly, just like Mudra, this has a 6 second timer, so you should get right to the active part. Thirdly, all actions that are not Mudra are completely locked out. This includes auto attacks, so when you press TCJ, you are committing 100% to TCJ. Be sure to properly weave it immediately after using a weapon skill. Also conversely, if you use Kasatsu, TCJ becomes blanked out. You cannot Kasatsu your TCJ. Now for actually using TCJ, notice that all of your Mudra have changed into Fuma Shuriken. Press any of them and it will grey it out, turning the other two into different Mudra. Essentially, you are inputting a Mudra combination and using every skill along the way. Let's take Sweeton for example. Pressing 10 will use Fuma Shuriken. Pressing Chi uses Raiton, then Jin will execute Sweeton. All three skills doing damage and giving you their effects. Also, instead of the normal 0.5 second recast time, Mudra under TCJ have a 1 second recast. This is where those orderings I mentioned kick in. Pretend Sweeton can only be used by going 10 Chi Jin. Because let's look at the other option. Using Chi first executes Fuma Shuriken. Then using 10, executes Katon. Single target skill, AoE skill, then single target Sweeton. Meanwhile, Ten Chi Jin is all single target abilities, one being Raiton. As such, with little to no exception, our single target use of TCJ is Ten Chi Jin. The same applies for Doton and our AoE use of TCJ. Jin is Fuma Shuriken, and we can't avoid that. Ten will then execute Katon, Finishing with Chi ends with Doton, so we can get Katon and Doton. Then check the other option. Ten first is Fuma Shuriken. Jin second gives Yoton, the worst Mudra we could use. Remember these facts and all the other rules for TCJ. Using it on cooldown like everything else should just naturally align it with your trick attack windows in bosses. But now we have to fit all of this into our opener. TCJ alone makes our opener a lot busier, but we have even more than just that. We have to fit in our Ninki gains too, which had a touch of extra weaving into the fold. We had to make two main changes in this opener. Dokumori will give us enough Ninki for a use of Bavakakra. We don't spend it until after TCJ because of two reasons. One is buffs. We don't want to use it before buffs are active, and Trick Attack is by itself due to wanting to use it in the back half of your GCD rather than the front half, so we just have to delay our OGCDs. From here, Raitons only give you space for a singular weave slot. Ninja is pretty fast, but we also sometimes will weave back to back. This is not one of those times, as there is no space. We want to use Dream Within a Dream and TCJ sooner than later due to cooldown timers. Nimki is not one of those cooldowns, so delaying it is fine. As for TCJ, that's weaved in after our second Raiton. It's a third Raiton and a Sweeton, though that Sweeton isn't going to do anything for us at this moment. As a result, this isn't the optimal opener at level 70. I believe there is a better opener that opens with TCJ. But while you're learning, I am focusing on muscle memory more toward level 100's opener and how Ninja generally plays. Otherwise, it still follows the same general flow. Throw out both our buffs, then spend all of our ninjutsu immediately. We're leaving the final Raiton after a full combo due to tanks pulling immediately, and making room for the level 100 opener skills. Afterward, it's mostly the same. Don't use any more Mudra until the next burst phase, where you'll spend your next ninjutsu to get Sweeton, then fit in three Raitons, and dream within a dream. Basically, just using stuff on cooldown, except for pulling in ninjutsu. Also remember Kazuma Toy exists. It's very minor, but you can go into burst windows with a few stacks prepared, so any combo hits inside of buff timers will be extra strong. 
As for AoE, Dokumori itself is actually a good bonus. We get a free Hellfrog medium thanks to it, on top of any Ninki we get from spamming AoE while on the move. The chip damage is whatever when we're getting Ninki for the actual burst. TCJ is actually pretty difficult to use in AoE. You have to move into position as if you're about to use Doton, but you have to use all three hits first. This means three seconds or more standing in the middle of the trash pack. They might be using AoEs, meaning a threat of death. Shade Shift is very useful to put up as you approach the next group. Essentially, Shade Shift should be part of your AoE opener. Not all tanks will attempt to move the enemies into your Doton if you're off-center, so take it into your own hands without getting yourself killed. TCJ also means you can skip the Doton from Kasatsu. The best option for TCJ in AoE is a Katan into Doton, and that Doton would overwrite the Kasatsu one. You can't place two down at once, so use Kasatsu for a Katan instead. Now on to Shadowbringers, where Ninja is going to get some major new skills that make some of our useless options now viable. Level 72, Maesui. On a 120 second cooldown, this dispels Shadow Walker from Sweeton and Hutan in exchange for 50 Ninki. Look back to our level 70 opener. We use Sweeton in the opener to get us Trick Attack, then we use TCJ and get a second Sweeton. Plus TCJ comes every two minutes, same as Maesui's cooldown. So after TCJ and bosses, we can Maesui to dispel that extra Sweeton for more Ninki and an extra Bafakakra. For AoE, this gives Hutan a use finally. You can use Hutan, use Maesui to dispel Shadow Walker, and then use Hellfrog Medium. It's a lot more work, but has potential to be a big gain. Hellfrog Medium has a slightly bigger range. Enemies Katan might have missed, even with perfect target choices, might be hit by Hellfrog Medium. This is especially true in wall-to-wall -wall pools, where large groups can fight each other to get closer to the tank. Though by level 80, we'll be using Maesui in a different way for AoE. It's a lot more to think about, but Maesui is a beneficial skill to implement into your rotation. Level 74, Enhanced Shikuchi 2. This is a more straightforward upgrade to Shikuchi. It can now hold two charges. The total cooldown is 120 seconds to get both back on the normal 60 second charge time. Being able to use two Shikuchis back to back is far more immediately useful. It also gives more room for Enhanced Shikuchi to take effect since you'll be doing burst windows every 60 seconds, though it still remains rare to need more than one or two Shikuchis. Level 74, Melee Mastery. This is just some basic power boost. It weirdly lists the non-combo potencies of the attacks, but this means the combo potencies are also improved. Overall though, there's no active changes you need to worry about. Level 76, Enhanced Kisatsu, Goku Mikyaku, and Hyosho Ranryu. Enhanced Kasatsu is a trait that upgrades Katan and Hyotan, but only when under the effect of Kasatsu. Remember being told to remember how to do Hyotan? This is why. If you forgot, go learn it now. Tenjin or Chijin, whichever is more comfy for you. First, let's talk about Katan's upgrade, Goka Mekyaku. The size and range are the same, but does a much improved 600 potency to all enemies hit. And remember, Kasatsu increases all damage done by 30%. So this is closer to 800 potency for an AoE. Hyotan's upgrade under Kasatsu is Hyosho Ranryu, a 1300 potency hit. Adjusted for Kasatsu, that's nearly 1700 potency. This will always be used under Trick Attack, so over 1800 potency. That's not even factoring Dokumori or other party buffs. This is by far your biggest hit. Anytime you use Kasatsu, single target or AoE, Make sure you're using the upgraded skills. Level 78, Shukiho 2. This is super simple, but boosts our Ninki economy a little bit. Aeolian Edge and Armor Crush, the combo finishers, both now give 10 Ninki instead of just 5. Level 80, Bunshin. This is another Ninki spender. Costing 50 Ninki and on an awkward 90 second cooldown, you get 5 stacks of Bunshin to spend over the next 30 seconds. Using any of your weapon skills, please don't use Throwing Dagger, will have your Shadow perform an attack. If it is a melee attack, it does 160 potency of damage regardless of which melee attack it was. AoE attacks do 80 potency from your Shadow's attack. It does mirror your attack and position, so be sure to place your AoE as normal. Further, it gives 5 Nimki every time it hits, giving you a 50% refund by the end. Because your attacks are also generating Nimki, 
the five attacks you have bunch in four will guaranteed bring you back to 50 Ninki. Speaking for just the power of bunch in itself though, that's 800 potency in single target and 400 potency for AoE. Much stronger than Bavakakra in Hellfrog. The really big issue is the 90 second cooldown. Because of this, it will naturally drift by 30 seconds. Half the uses of Bunshin won't even be in some form of burst phase, meaning Trick Attack won't be buffing it. Yet the power of Bunshin is so high, we still want to use it on cooldown. Holding it is not going to be worth it, and it will realign itself. Which will lead us into the opener. Now that we have another Ninki Spender and Earner, things are going to be a bit more all over the place. But with the opener I've been giving you, it's actually relatively easy to slot things in. We have our first double weave here, with adding in Bunshin after Dokumori. Two attacks and Dokumori will be exactly 50 Ninki, and due to Bunshin's lasting effect, you want it out earlier than later. Within the opener as it is right now, we have four GCDs, meaning you'll get a fifth one after the final Raiton. The 30 second timer for Bunshin isn't a concern. The first Raiton is now Hyosho Ran Ryu, since we have Kasatsu running. Kasatsu is always used for Hyosho, no matter what. It's just a better Raiton. TCJ ends with us weaving in Mace Wii, giving us more than enough Ninki for our first Bavakakra. We use this after Spinning Edge, the first available weaving slot. After two more attacks, we'll be back over 50 Ninki between natural gains and the gains from Bunshin, so a second Bavakakra before the final Raiton. The Raiton comes last for a number of reasons, most of them due to high level skills. If you want to use the Raiton sooner, it's sort of fine, but you can fit it into Trick Attack just barely if you timed it right. Generally though, the order makes a lot of sense. A short delay to time our buffs with the party into immediately dumping our strongest attacks during all party buffs and making the most of our full toolkit. The problem is how varied the toolkit is and not getting lost in all of the effects. AoE meanwhile is a bit of a mess and it's going to get worse. We can fit in a Hutan now to make use of Mace Wii, which will get us a Hellfrog medium. This also starts the charge timer of Ninjutsu sooner than later, for an extra Katan at the end. TCJ still ends up being best used for a Dotan, and Goka Mikyaku is how we'll use our Kasatsu. It's all a bit of a mess with how many different things we want here. Without Mace Wii, even spamming AoE attacks just to get Ninki in the run-up, you're not going to get enough Ninki for both Bunshin and Hellfrog. Which again, Hellfrog's very slight size increase could be enough to hit more enemies than Katan. At worst, they are very comparable in power. Plus at level 100, it's outright better. You see why I emphasize how AoE openers are a bit less straightforward than a singular ordering of skills you follow? Ninja especially throws in so many curveballs, something mathematically worse is functionally stronger. Let's not stay stuck in the weeds and get moving into Endwalker. Things are going to get yet another level more complex. Level 82, Phantom Kamaitachi. This is our one and only case of action change settings coming in. Phantom Kamaitachi can be its own button or replace Bunshin, or both at once. Choose which one is comfier to you, but I will be keeping them as one button. As said, this replaces Bunshin after you use it. For 45 seconds, you are granted Phantom Kamaitachi ready. It has a 20 yom range, so you can throw it out from a distance. It does 600 potency to a target, and 300 potency to all enemies within 5 yoms of the original target. It also grants 10 Ninki, further increasing how much Bunshin refunds its own cost. And this is a weapon skill, meaning it sets off the GCD. You were already using Bunshin in both single target and AoE. This just gives you another big hit to throw in, or you can hold it for a little bit if need be. Throwing Dagger remains terrible, while Phantom Kamaitachi is a ranged hit with no downside, only upsides. If you need to move away from a boss, use the Phantom to keep hitting. Level 84, Shukiho 3 and Melee Mastery 2. I'm pairing these together not because they're the same level, but because they serve the same purpose. Shukiho 3 further boosts the Ninki gains of Armor Crush and Aeolian Edge to 15. This means slightly more Bavakakras. Melee Mastery 2 is just simple power boost to Spinning Edge and Gust Slash. The context of these skills hasn't changed. Level 86, Hollow Nozuchi. Hollow Nozuchi is a buff to Dotan. When using Katan, Goka Mekyaku, Phantom Kamaitachi, or Hakumujin Satsu in a combo, your Dotan puddle will explode into snakes and do an additional 50 potency of damage to all enemies inside of it. 
This is a decent boost to Doton and further emphasizes proper Doton placement. It can add up fairly quickly, but doesn't at all change how to perform AoE. At most it means in openers you want to place TCG sooner than later to take advantage of your Katan and Hawk Mujinsatsu. Level 88, Enhanced Mace Wii. Using Mace Wii will now grant you the buff of Mace Wii for 30 seconds. Your next Bavakakra will do an additional 150 potency. Given Mace Wii itself gives 50 Ninki, it's outright buffing that specific Bavakakra alone. For this reason, this doesn't change anything. Level 90, Enhanced Raiton, Forked Raiju, and Fleeting Raiju. Raiton now has an extra effect. Each use of Raiton grants you a stack of Raiju ready, up to a maximum of 3. If you use any other weapon skill before using Raiju ready, you lose all the stacks you have. As such, we'll be using them as soon as possible. The reverse is not true though. Raiju skills do not break in normal combo. Spend Raiju ready on Forked Raiju and Fleeting Raiju. Forked Raiju has a 20 arm range, does 560 potency to a target, and is a gap closer. It also gives 5 Ninki. It's a very quick gap closer, getting you to the enemy in an instant. This also means the animation lock involved is very small. If you are far away from an enemy because of something like a boss scented AoE, you can fork Raiju to move right back in without worrying about something like throwing dagger. Fleeting Raiju is the same power. It is used in melee range and has no animation lock. Forked Raiju should be purely used as a gap closer, while you default to Fleeting Raiju. And again, you must use Raijus before any other weapon skills. Mudras are fine, since you could stack up to three Raiju ready. Because we basically almost exclusively use Mudra within openers, we won't be seeing much of it outside of burst phases. Using a Raiton as a ranged attack to avoid some sort of damage is about the sole exception. So now we have to fit in our Phantom and Raiju into our opener. Luckily, Raiju don't matter for our AoE opener, but Single Target gets three Raitons, two normal and one from TCJ. So let's slot these in. Phantom Kamaitachi is going to replace our Armor Crush. It's just a generally far better hit. You only get five less Kenki, which is fine. We wouldn't get an extra Bavakakra in the opener anyway. From there, things are the exact same until after TCJ. Rather than continuing our combo, we have to spend our two uses of Fleeting Raiju. After those, we can finally use Armor Crush. We end on the same Raiton, but now with an added Raiju. Notice that the timings for our Bavakakras have remained consistent from level 80. The GCD Phantom replaced is an equal amount of Ninki. The two Raijus both replaced attacks that each have 5. Armor Crush at the end actually gives us an extra 5 compared to at level 80. So the timings for Bavakakra did not need to change. So really, it was very easy to slot these in. Similarly goes for AoE. All we have to factor in are Hollow Nozuchi and Phantom. We're going to bunch in as soon as possible for Phantom. Phantom, Goka, and Katan all trigger Hollow Nozuchi, effectively buffing them by 50 potency each. This really starts to emphasize how much you want to be doing attacks during the run. Overall, Endwalker is a good expansion for us while not making things any more complex. As far as openers, we just replace basic hits with the new ones. Dawn Trail, meanwhile, we're getting a bit of Column A and Column B. Level 92? Trick Attack Mastery and Kunai's Bane. Finally, things come full circle. Trick Attack is now an AoE on a chosen target, but keeps the same range of use. It deals 600 potency to the initial target and 300 potency to all surrounding enemies. All enemies hit will have Kunai's Bane put on them, increasing your damage by 10%. Start using Kunai's Bane in AoE, which also means you need to use Hutan twice. We can't use Hide, there is no way to get Katan and Hutan in the same TCJ, and we want to make use of Mace Wii. So we use two Hutans and TCJ remains the same usage. Level 94, Melee Mastery 3. This is just a lot of power boosts. The notable ones are your single target Mudra with the exception of Hyosho Ranryu, and a nice buff to your Raiju. Otherwise, not really all that important to go through. Level 96, Enhanced Dokumori, Deathfrog Medium, and Zesho Meppo. Dokumori gives us Higi for 30 seconds. What Higi does is give us access to Hellfrog Large and Sonic Homing Attack. It will buff the next Ninki Spender you use. Deathfrog is 300 potency to all enemies hit, a 140 potency boost over Hellfrog. Zesho Meppo is 320 potency stronger than Bafakakra. 
Note that if you stack on Macewi, Macewi is still a static 150 potency increase. So don't worry about Macewi's bonus. You can safely use Zesho Meppo without it. For using this, they kind of just work as power boosts. Anytime you use Dokumori, you're all but guaranteed to also end up using Hellfrog or Bavakakra. So there's not much thought to put in. Level 100, Enhanced TCJ and Tenri Jindo. Similar to Bunshin, TCJ will become Tenri Jindo after every use. You have Tenri Jindo ready for 30 seconds, but you won't be holding on to it for that long. This is an OGCD that is also a ranged attack. It deals damage to a target and all enemies within 5 yams of it, similar to Hellfrog. The target takes 1100 potency with all other enemies taking 550. There's not much more to think about with this. You've already learned to be using all of your kit, and this one is simply another big hit you get to access after every TCJ. Simply use it when you have it, weaving it in wherever you have room. So now we have our final opener. This is the reverse of level 90, where single target had a bigger change than AoE. Here, AoE is what got a bigger change, where single target, we only have to fit in Tenri Jindo. Specifically, we're going to put Tenri Jindo in the weave with Zesho Meppo. We want to ensure it hits all other party buffs, so soon it is better. However, you can move Zesho Meppo back one GCD if need be. Double weaves can be difficult on Ninja. The Dokumori and Bunshin double weave is not really optional though. All other weaving slots are taken up, and we don't want to move Dokumori up one GCD. That's about the best option if you have to single weave though. That's really all there is to it. The rest was linear upgrades that do not change how the opener plays. So let's do the karaoke opener. This will be me saying the names of skills as they come out. Ninja is a very fast job, so you'll be hearing skill names interrupt each other for most of the opener. This should give you a good feel for how the opener feels to perform. Pre-pull, Ten, Chi, Jin. Sweeton, Ksatsu, Spinning Edge. Gust Slash, Dokumori, Bunchin. Phantom Kamaitachi, Kunai Spain. Ten, Jin, Yosho Renri, Dream Within Dream. Ten, Chi, Raiton, TCJ. Ten, Chi, Jin, Meisui, Fleeting Raiju, Zashumepo, Tenri Jindo, Fleeting Raiju. Armor Crush, Bavakakra, Ten, Chi, Raiton. Fleeting Raiju. Moving into the AoE opener, we have to fit in three things. One of them is obviously Tenri Jindo. The next is Kunai's Bane. Now that it is an AoE, it's actually useful for AoE. But to use it, that means we need a Hutan. Using Hutan will allow us to place Kunai's Bane onto the enemies before we start the rest of our big hits. So that's now two Hutans, one to use Meisui, and the second for Kunai's Bane. Before, you could have theoretically said the Dokumori Ninki is enough for Bunshin, and you could just skip Hellfrog until your natural generation gets you there. Now, Deathfrog Medium is just far too strong to miss out on. From there, we're just struggling to fit everything in. I've been quiet on it up till now, but feel free to basically ignore Dream Within a Dream generally. It's a strong hit, but single target means the opportunity cost of a weave window is too much to lose. If you have space for it, Go for it, use it, but it really is the least important skill with how Ninja's AoE is already difficult. On the bright side, Dawn Trail pools seemingly often have one enemy with a lot more HP than the others, so it's not worthless in that context. But that is how Ninja progresses. With how it went through openers, things generally progressed in a natural way that hopefully kept you going. It's a fast job with a lot going on, but things are very simple and very chill between those burst sections. Thank you for watching this Ninja 1 to 100 leveling skills guide. Feel free to give feedback or ask questions on what might still be confusing to you. I'm always thinking to improve, as should you. Don't stop with this guide even if I succeeded in helping you improve. Please leave a rating, comment, sub, those really do help creators. You can also come watch me on Twitch or even go follow my Patreon. The links in the description will take you where you need to. Have fun in your adventures across Tyrol, and may the power of Anne and Nidhogg's lay waste to your enemies.